like being on a fairground. It is like being I on love a it. It's like being on a roller coaster. Welcome to the car, guys. This week, this beautiful 996 GT3 in guards red with a full roll cage. We're going to take this car out on some beautiful twisty roads and see if it lives up to all the hype. So this is a homologation car designed specifically to meet FIA standards for going racing. And this is where Porsche were staying within their roots and using narrow bodied cars for their racing cars. So there's no big flared turbo arches, nice and slim hipped. It's a pretty car, very pretty car. These, possibly the best wheels ever produced on a GT car. Six pot calipers at the front, proper Porsche stopping power, four pots on the back. So here at the front of the car, we have the super controversial fried egg headlights. Now, at the time that the 996 was launched, everyone hated these lights. They are a bit ungainly, and if you look back at the 993, very, very delicate. 997, they brought back the delicate ones. These were a bit of an abomination, but interestingly now, I think they're aging quite well. I don't mind them at all. So we open the... Uh bonnet boot on this 911 and at least you can actually see the engine which is kind of the last year that it allowed you to have any visibility of what was going on it's only a tiny little opening so this is the gt version of the first of the water cooled cars it's a 3.6 litre flat six develops 380 horsepower 284 pound foot of torque red lines are 8200 would you believe max torque deployed at about 5000 rpm so it's a very, very nice torquey engine. It's quite lightweight, this car, just 1,300 kilos, which means that this beast shoves it up the road in 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds and then on to 190 miles an hour. That's pretty impressive. This is the Gen 2 version of the 996 GT3. Porsche purists amongst you will know that the difference between the two is that the Gen 1 has the swoopy, swoopy rear wing, whereas the Gen 2 that Jeremy Clarkson tested has this fantastic big fixed wing. This is where the wings started to get a little bit bonkers with Porsche. This is Genesis right here. After this point, everything started to get massive and iron boardy and big. The GT3 RS version of this, enormous wing, 997, 991, 991.2, enormous. So this is where it all started. Really cool racing seats in this particular GT3. You can see they're all sculpted with the back. Look at the beautiful polished roll cage. Now, I haven't seen many like this. Most of them are either body colored or black, but I think that really brings it out. And this particular car fitted with full set of harnesses. Now, they're neatly rolled up, so I'm not as sure if they've ever been used. Here on the cushions, on the seat swabs, these are actually Velcroed into place because underneath them is the buckle for the harnesses. How cool is that? Don't think it's ever been used. Look at the color of those belts. Beautifully carpeted in the rear, uh, no rear seats obviously because it's a GT car, but the roll cage precludes anybody even squeezing slightly in the back of it. So we're fairly convinced that this is my type of Porsche, is that what we're saying? Yeah, I think this is right up your street, this one. So I should declare an interest straight away, which is that I had two of these cars. Someone crashed into the first one and wrote it off. Oh no. Three right weeks then. after I got it. Really? Three weeks? Yeah. I just got it. I'd waited nine months for this gorgeous Gen 2 GT3 in uh, basalt black and a drunk driver smashed into a car ahead of me, which then span out of control, smashed into my car, wrote it off. I was left crashed into a tree, but fortunately the tree was there because I was actually on the edge of quite a big cliff. So the tree, such saved as it you. was, saved me going straight off the cliff. Oh, how sad were you? Did you have a little tear in your eye? I had quite a lot of tears, yes, yeah. because then I found out that I wasn't going to get another one for another nine months. Oh no! I got the second one nine months later, exactly the same spec, and I had that for a number of years. It was my daily car. I managed to spin that as well quite spectacularly uh, on a dual carriageway with some standing water. Even just pottering around, which is what we're having to do at the moment, it just feels so right. The pedals are all in the right place. The steering is absolutely spot on. It's so firm, this car. Yeah, and, and occasionally, so occasionally you'll hear a ping 
moment where it, where it sort of releases the pressure from the from the body shell. It's moving around all the time. It's it's hunting across the different surfaces. So even at 40 miles an hour, it, it, you're getting so much feedback from it. It's constantly telling you what's going on yeah. under those wheels. You can feel the power at the back. You know there's loads of grip back there, and the front's just kind of dancing around and doing its thing. It's just amazing. I remember distinctly the extra push you get, that, that additional shove from 6,000 onwards was spectacular. I remember thinking at the time, this is the fastest car I've ever been in. I could not believe that it kept accelerating as hard as it did. You love this car, don't you? It was, it was really, a good car. really, really love these. It was a good car. I'm going to give it some mileage because we have a bit of a road. Here's Here we go. Four and a half RP, 1,000 RPM in seconds. You're going to love this. What a noise! Come on! A decent amount of downforce from that much bigger wing. It's got a lot of mechanical grip anyway, because yeah. because it's so flipping thick, the tyres on the back of this thing. But you've got all of that delicacy, but it's backed up with a proper weighty, meaty race engine yes. with a decent amount of torque yes. that absolutely screams up to the 8,000 mark. The downsides of the 996 is very, very tricky wet weather handling. So they, say tricky. they'll spin, they'll just spin and you will not get it back. But when you bought them, you actually got a free advanced high speed really? handling course <laughs> with the car. They, they actually oh, sent you on a course brilliant. to make sure you could handle the car because they knew how tricky it was. And I still spun it. So what you're suggesting to me is this is dialed up to be very nervous. I wouldn't say it's necessarily nervous when it's hot and sticky and dry, but in the wet... Which living in the UK is literally every day. It's every day. It's like, it's like yeah. Los Angeles, isn't it? Oh, in the no. if, you, if you're not from the United Kingdom, it's basically Los Angeles, but with oh. Tudor houses. Got some stopping power, this oh thing. Oh my god. And I've just got a little light that says, Consider range on remaining fuel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving the way the sun is glinting off this roll cage as well. I would Beautiful, definitely, isn't it? I would have one of these now. This is lovely. And that's from the factory as well. That's not been tarted up. Is it? Yeah, because there's a proper Porsche down oh. on your left hand side there. Oh. There's a proper Porsche factory sticker. So oh, this is specs good. like this. The rev counter's a lot smaller. I don't quite, I don't really like that. I prefer to have a proper big full rev counter. Well, the 996, if you remember, this was the first time that the, the Boxster and the 911 kind of shared the dials and the, and the basic and interior. The lamps and the... Yeah, a lot of people slagged off the dashboard and everything on this car, but when it came out, but I actually quite like it. I like these sort of little pebble buttons that you yeah, get. Yeah, I don't mind it. I, to be honest, I actually prefer this to the 997 dashboard. Oh, controversial. But you've still got proper analog dials at the time. You do have this hokey digital effects. That was the first time really that this these digital things were coming in because yep. you didn't have that really on the 993 at all. You just see, it's what a lot La Ferrari on it. Low loader. Really? Yeah. Well, up ahead. Up ahead. Is a LaFerrari on a low loader, a white one. Looks quite nice, doesn't it? Nice. Hmm. It's a LaFerrari on a recovery truck. A very familiar sight, sadly. <laughs> Saucer of milk, table three. The thing you have to bear in mind about these cars, ladies and gentlemen, is that the engine on a 996 GT3 is 50,000 pounds just for the engine. That's ridiculous. And bear in mind the car was like 83,000 at the time. It gives you an idea of how much the rest of the car is worth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like being on a fairground. It is like being I on love a fairground. it. It's like being on a roller coaster. It sounds amazing as well, right? Oh. How good does that sound? It's got the same sort of raw sound as the as the modern GT3 though. Yes. Very similar. I mean, the, you know, the acoustics and, and the sort of level of, of noise is very similar. I think it's modern enough for you to not worry about reliability yep. and feel like you've got quite a modern car, but it's old school enough to not have too much digital nonsensory. Nonsensory. And you've still is got this. You no. Know, <laughs> and then you've still got this massive amount of beautiful, brutal, old school power. I love how responsive the engine is. Yeah, as well. really is like that. People do believe that the Gen 1 
GT3 996 is just has slightly better handling. It's just, it's just a bit softer. They're relatively affordable. What's this car? 60 grand. 60 grand. I think that's an absolute bargain. Isn't it? This is 50,000 miles, right? So this, I would therefore say 60K for a 50,000 mile car is too much. Too much. Yeah, especially as values have started to dip a bit. And considering you could have got a year ago, a 9,000 mile example for 80,000. We need to find a sweet spot of a 30,000 mile one. That's what we want. That's basically what we're looking for. Two things to concern me. One, the 996s always seem to suffer with this blown engine thing. IMS bearings. A lot of them have been fixed though. I mean, they, they pretty much all would be fixed, I would think. And the other thing that worries me is that this engine is probably still 50 grand. If the engine blows, you basically just got to walk away from it. That's it. You've had your fun. There's a good chance that this car has spent a large amount of its life on track. Yes. But that was well, what no, it was these, designed to do. Yeah. These belts, though, I mean, you look at them, they are, they are very neat and tidily yes. clipped up. But Classic trick of the trade, though, isn't it? Eh? No, Up to update the bottom. belts. Everyone thinks it's brand new. They probably replaced the belts when the last person died in it. <laughs> So this is the first time I've driven this car since I had one. Since you had one? In 2000, call it six. Yeah. Let's see what this acceleration is like then. Go. Oh, yes. Brings back some good memories. Yeah. It's still got it. There's just something so right. inherently right about Porsche GT cars. They're right. There is. They got it. They've got whatever this special yeah. recipe, this special sauce they've got, they have it and they keep using it. I mean, the clutch is pretty heavy, I have to say. But not overly. You're just, no. you're just used to modern Porsches. So much grip. Yeah, I mean. So much grip. In any other car, that would have just flown. We would have skidded all over the place. Yeah, there. we would. We would have been spinning with people pointing and laughing at us. And this thing just went, <laughs> let's on. go. Come on in. Is that all you got? Let's have it. This, is like, this car's like Ray Winston. Is it? Yeah, it's the Ray Winston of car. Where's your tool? Come on in, let's have it, you slay. <laughs> I'm the daddy now. That's what this oh. is. Loving that. So what do we dislike about this 996 GT3? The clutch pedal's a little bit on the heavy side. The wet weather performance, very, very tricky slash dangerous. <laughs> It's a very, very stiff car. It's Does a bit get... tiresome over the speed humps that we were doing. What do we like? Like the handling. Yep. Dry weather handling. Yes. Yes, dry weather handling. Nice caveat. Steering feel. Love the way the gearbox feels. Uh, so even though this has clearly been tracked and you know driven quite hard, yep. everything, all the mechanical bits of this car are still really feel very tight yeah it's proper bomb proof engineering that you get in these totally. you can you can rely on it i think it's uh, the noise is astounding yes definitely i think it's a really well proportioned car i love the wing Good size. It's, it's yeah it's a small it's small isn't it it's diminutive it is very small in modern day cars you don't you forget how petite these cars are even though at the time they felt pretty big but it's a slim body one so it just looks right, the proportions, yeah. are, and with the wheels that this car's got as well, just, it does look, it's a real looker, I think. And I, I, I quite like the guards red on it as well. Oh, really? I think that's pretty good, yeah, mm. I like it. You don't want to be hiding away like some shrinking violet, you want to be saying, yeah, I've got an amazing GT car. Love the roll cage as well. Look at that! Look at it. Oh, that is the best. It's going to make you smile every time you get in this car. I would definitely, definitely want one. <laughs> for the right price the right mileage level i think these are an appreciating future classic yeah totally we've got to have one in the garage at some point it's just such an, uh, an engaging drive it's it's a car that you can even if you are going down the garage to get a pint of milk you'll still enjoy it it doesn't matter how far or how short the distances are this car really makes you feel properly properly excited and remember it's one of the best value porsche gt cars that you can currently buy what are you thinking well, i'm thinking you should buy it i'm you thinking ashgood ashgood porsche should do you a deal on it you reckon that's what i think they should do you can't get the kids in the back yeah but this is your fun toy this is your little fun this thing this is true volvo for kids volvo for kids gt3 for stiffies <laughs> well, i think this car will appreciate your value I can't see it not. 
there's only so long that the Porsche community can shut it for having water running through its veins. I think that's. I think those times have gone. I think people are fully happy to embrace 996s. They've always been the cheapest 911, but the GT3 is special. It's just. It's not like a 996 normally. Most of it is new. It's very motorsport. It's very similar to the way that most people hate the 360 Modena but the Challenge to Dale is They're just not. a whole other ball yeah, yeah. game. You know how much I like to hate on Porsches. Well, you say that, you say, oh, I hate Porsches, and then whenever I put you in one, you're like, I love it, I love it. So I think that might be a load of old bulls. Thanks for watching this episode, guys, of the 996 GT3. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Please subscribe, leave comments, because we read them all. Ding that notification bell for the next time we've got a video uploaded. And we'll see you next week.